This week, we're going to take a look at a stock that, in my opinion, is extremely cheap right now for what you get. However, is the underlying business a good investment? This week, we're going to take a look at ASOS PLC. Hey there, guys. How's it going? Welcome to episode number 63 of the FTSE Show. My name is Chris Chillingworth. Uh, so, like I say, we're going to take a look at a company called ASOS PLC today, uh, an online clothing company. I have spent the whole, it's now 10 to 9 p.m., right? I'm just going to remove this message. There we go. 10 to 9 p.m., right? I started analyzing ASOS this morning at about 10 o'clock this morning. So we're getting on for 12 hours. I've been I've analyzed 10 years of annual reports. I've been deep into these annual reports today. I've been writing down all my notes. I've been going through all of the information. I've been taking all the key details that matter, in my opinion. I've put them into a slide, and we are going to have a look and look at all the key details, and we're going to try and cram it all into a 15, 20, probably 30 minute show. Um, so let's dive in and get on with it. Um, so this is a global online fashion and beauty retailer. Uh, they do women's and men's wear, footwear, accessories, sportswear, bridal wear, non-gender specific clothing, um, beauty and jewelry. So awesome. They, I mean, they're, they're covering pretty much all the bases there, right? Um, so like I say, online only, no stores, it's all online. Uh, and they're global. They, 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 they um, reach out to something like 190 different countries. So the company's ethos, their aim, you'll read this in every single annual report. They aim to be the world's number one fashion retailer. That's their their top goal. That's what they're aiming to achieve. Um, and they're doing it, or they have been doing a pretty good job of getting there, to be fair. Uh, as we go through this, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. They focus on what they call uh, the Gen Z. I had to look this up. <laughs> Shows you how old I'm getting. Well, I don't know what Gen Z means. Um, but it's a, a, the 15-year-old to 30s demographic, essentially. So they're actually aiming at like 20-something. Uh, that's their kind of core demographic, but it falls within the Gen Z time period apparently uh they sell their own label like products um clothing with just the asos label inside it but they also sell a lot of branded clothing as well so many of the brand names you might have heard of before like ralph Lauren and stuff like that they stock a lot of those clothes in there uh on their websites as well uh they've got a magazine called ace just asos magazine and it's actually one of the most read fashion magazines it's free but they distribute something like 450 to 500,000 copies uh, per issue, I think it was, uh, and that includes digital recipients, so people who are reading on Kindle and iPad and stuff like that. Um, but uh, whilst it's free, it's a big kind of marketing tool. There's a lot of integration within that magazine, so people can click on the clothes and go straight to the website and buy them, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is a company that doesn't pay a dividend. They've not paid a dividend yet um, in their history. So I've gone through all the annual reports and every year it's, we do not think it's the right time to be paying dividends. We want to reinvest that money back into the business. Now, I love that. Um, as an investor, I'm not a dividend investor. So uh, whilst dividends are nice and I never turn down free money, uh, I'm not really interested in, in investing in a company purely for a dividend. Uh, I'd rather a company actually keep the, the capital, keep the money, uh, and use it to grow the business because I'm probably going to make a lot more in share price growth than I will in them giving me the money to, to put to work. I'd rather they keep it. That's the reason I'm investing in them in the first place is because they're doing a very good job at using shareholders funds to grow the business. So. So let's dive into the kind of chronological slides then. So we start from 2012. That's generally where I'm starting on these shows. I normally, for my clients, we go back even further, but I just can't cram it all into a, an episode on, on YouTube. So we're going to start in 2012. At the time, they had 4.4 million active customers. So try and remember that figure, 4.4 million. That's where they started in 2012. Uh, they were the second most visited fashion website on the planet. So their goal of trying to become the number one global fashion website, I mean, they're getting there, aren't they, right? Already in 2012, uh, with three quarter of a million daily visits. 
Uh, they were behind uh, a website called vancl.com or Vancl. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's foreign. Uh, this is global, of course, so that could be a, a, a website from overseas that I'm just not familiar with. Or maybe I'm just out of touch with today's fashion. That's quite possible. Um, but they, that, this company were getting 920,000 a day, so quite a popular site. I should go and check it, really. I should go and have a look and see what it's all about, but just haven't got around to it. Um, they launched a new dedicated geographic website for Australia, Spain and Italy. So presumably these are asos.com.au or um, what's Italy? IT. Um, anyway, they've opened their first office in Australia. They had a revenue of 495 million. Uh, this is a very different company today. But back in 2012, 495 million made a true profit with extraneous uh, ex- uh, income or expenses taken out. So just the underlying everyday revenue of the business, no sales of assets, no exceptional costs or exceptional incomes. All of that's taken out and they made a true profit of 9.9 million. And back then the share price was already at £26.70. So pretty cool. Uh, 2013, 7.1 million active customers. So quite a jump from the 4.4. UK sales were up 34%. International sales 44%. And they reported that 30% of all their traffic was coming from mobile devices. And that you'll see that kind of uh, grow over the years. I find that quite fascinating. But back in 2013, it was down at 30%. Uh, they are now the number one visited apparel, 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 apparel website uh, in the UK, New Zealand, Australia, and Denmark. So number one in all these countries. They were the third highest most visited site in Hong Kong, fourth in Norway, and they'd moved from 26th up to 17th in the USA. Uh, their average basket value. So basically what they're doing is they're taking all the sales and they're working it out per customer uh, and looking at the 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 average customer sale, essentially, when they go to the website and they make a transaction, what's the average sale price that they're making? And it was sixty one pounds three pence. This is a good metric to measure over the years to see is this a number that's increasing, is it decreasing? What's the overall trend? What's going on? And that's what we're essentially doing with a lot of this stuff. We're looking at the active customers: are they going up? Are they going down? How are the UK sales doing in relation to international sales? What's the percentage of traffic from mobile devices? All this kind of stuff is just metrics that we can follow that give us a wider picture of what's going on at the company. Um, They established a logistics partnership in China, allowing domestic distribution to China-based customers. They've launched dedicated Russian and Chinese websites. And the board were talking about how their focus is now on growth in China. So it's 2013. That was their kind of focus. Um, revenues at seven six nine million at this point, so quite a jump from the previous year. What was the previous year? Four nine five. So a huge jump up in revenue. True profits also a huge jump in there as well, from nine point nine million to forty point nine million, and the share price reacted accordingly and jumped from a crazy twenty six seventy up to sixty one sixty. So that's a that's a huge jump, two hundred percent jump almost. Um, so, yeah, 2013, I would have to argue, is a pretty good year for ASOS. Uh, 2014, 8.8 million active customers. UK sales up again, another 35%. International sales up 22%. Uh, now 45% of all traffic coming from mobile devices. However, let's take a look in the bottom left-hand corner here. Revenue, 975 million. Superb. However, true profit, uh, dropped down from 40.9 down to 33.5 million and they explained that the profits fell f- 11% due to 8.6 million costs related to their China expansion and also there was a fire at their uh, Barnsley distribution centre pictured there I managed to find a picture on the internet um, and so uh, yeah that, that hampered profits that year I mean still made a profit but it just knocked profits down a little by about 11% uh, now the 6th most visited apparel apparel <laughs> retailer in the USA I just check how that word is pronounced shouldn't I really 7th uh, in Russia 43rd in China so work to do in China by the looks of things especially when they're spending 8.6 million 
on the expansion into China. Average basket value climbed to 62.82. Staff numbers increased by 461. So this is a a rapidly expanding company. Uh, New warehouse opened in in, in Germany. Next day delivery added to Germany and France. Sunday delivery added to the UK. 32 million invested in expanding their Barnsley warehouse in the hope that it's going to give them the capacity to do 2.5 billion of sales per year. This was a board, this was a company who were looking ahead and thinking, we're going to be needing more capacity. We are growing, if we're going to continue to grow in the way we are. And they obviously had high hopes that they would do so. 2015, 9.9 million active customers. UK sales up again, 28%. International starting to slow down, only up 12%. Uh, 58% of all traffic now coming from mobile devices. So you can see this is a huge trend towards moving away from using desktop PCs and moving towards mobiles, which we know has pretty much happened now in 2022. Um, But it's really interesting to see how that was progressing. Uh, They've fallen to the 14th most visited website in the USA, I think. Where were they? Sixth in 2014. So they've fallen from sixth to 14th in the USA. Now 26th in China. So there's some progression there. That's some some considerable growth. Um, and sixth in Russia. Average basket value at that point was 68.74. 12% increase in staff. Now over 2,000 staff. However, the China operation is currently loss making. And it's cost them 5.2 million in 2015. They've got plans afoot to improve the website in order to increase sales. Revenue hit 1.1 billion, true profit of 41 million. So we're seeing quite considerable growth in revenue, but we're not really seeing that in the profit at this stage. Uh, Share price has fallen quite a bit to 31 pounds so still you know growth from original when we started in 2012 but remember we reached those peak highs of 61 60 you know then they had the fire the profits fell there was the additional cost for the china expansion and then in 2015 uh we we're basically seeing more losses caused from the china expansion and share prices started to fall back down again and profits aren't as high as you would expect them to be with 1.1 billion coming in and only 41 million in profit. So 2016, 12.4 million active customers. So remember, we started at 4.4 million in 2012. It's now four years later and they've got 12.4 million active customers. These are people who have bought at least once in the last year. So that's quite a lot and it's quite considerable growth. UK sales jumping up 27% again. International sales looking healthy, jumping up 25%. 66% of all traffic now coming from mobile devices. Average basket value continues to increase to £70.84. Staff is increasing to 2664 This is all looking pretty awesome, right? Then take a look again at the bottom left-hand corner. Revenues at $1.4 billion that year. However, true profits falling even further to $34.7 million. So revenues increasing, but profits just, they're not going anywhere. And they're quite low in relation. I mean, what are we talking there? So just a couple of percent. So quite thin profit margins there. Share price done has bounced back a bit, though, at £49.80 by the end of 2016 or by the time... Um, the the annual report came out in 2016. Uh, profits were hit, however, due to a major decision to close the loss-making China expansion. Kind of saw that coming, didn't we? Uh, it lost another 3.6 million in 2016. The board decided enough is enough. We're not going to get anywhere with this. It's time to axe it. Uh, they also incurred exceptional losses of 6.5 million in closure costs. So it's taken a bit of a chunk off their profit in 2016, having to close the China uh, expansion program. They also had a trademark infringement dispute with ASOS of Switzerland, pictured here on the left, uh, which was a kind of sport cycling apparel company. Um, They've now settled that cost in 20.9 million. Uh, And also 20 million was invested into further expansion of the Barnsley Warehouse. They've also launched a new ASOS mobile website and a new app. So 2016. 
2017, up to 15.4 million active customers, record sales year and a record profit year. So great year for ASOS 2017. 71% of traffic now coming from mobile devices. Uh, average basket value up to £72.24. Staff up to 3,500 people with plans to employ another 1,000 people in 2018. They've launched a new active sportswear br uh, range, a new face and body beauty range. Uh, they've opened a new warehouse in Germany. Revenue gone to a record high of 1.9 billion. True profit up to a record high of 64 million. Share price back up to 68 pound 40. 2017 was the year, wasn't it? Uh, ASOS looking awesome in 2017. What? And investors must have been thinking this is just the ride of our lives. 2018 active customers up to 18.4 million. We started on 4.4 million just six years ago. This is insane. Record sales again and a record profit year in 2018. Now 77% of traffic coming from mobile devices. Average basket value increases again to £73. They launch a new gender neutral clothing range, apparently, which I think made them something like £250,000 in the first year. And they were quite happy about that. Uh, revenue climbed to 2.4 billion. True profit at 82 million. The share price staying up there around 60 pounds a share. So 2018, another good year. And you're thinking this is doing the company doing pretty well, you know. 2019, now 20.3 million active customers. It's just growing every year and it's fantastic. Lower than expected profits, however, due to an underestimation of the complexity and costs of transitioning to an expanded international warehouse network. Um, so essentially, they had the center of distribution in Barnsley in the UK and they were operating most of the business out of that. And what they started to try and do is starting to create a network of warehouses internationally but they all had to kind of speak to each other and manage stock together um, and they underestimated the complexity and the costs of that uh, and this is the board I'm talking about here and so those transitional costs actually came in at 45 million plus another 5.5 million of restructuring costs the 50 million lost in that transition which must have been a necessary transition for the growth of the business, certainly in the eyes of the board. Uh, and so you kind of think, OK, well, we could we can take a, a drop in profits for a year if it means that in the future things are going to be far more profitable. That's investment, right? Um, but revenue was at 2.7 billion, but profits only at 24 million. So they really uh, the profit margin was just tiny. It was less than one percent uh, and share price fell off the back of that information down to 33 so literally halved uh down to 33 point pound 90 pence so uh yeah 2019 uh, by the way 81.9 percent traffic coming from mobile devices and the average basket value fell fell from from 73 pounds to 71.29 so active customers are growing revenues growing it's just the profits it's the costs the costs of running the business are just hampering those profits, unfortunately. Uh, the average basket value fell as well. And it's just the share price has been knocked because investors would have just walked away from the fact that profits were going down. They would have taken their investment and invested it elsewhere, probably. 2020, 23.4 million active customers. So every year it's growing. Record revenue, record profits upon a bounce back from COVID-19 lockdowns. 85.5% uh, of traffic now coming from mobile devices. Uh, average basket value remained flat at about 71.92, pretty similar to the year before. Uh, the company issued a uh, did a share issue, uh, which they they employed to try and help the business during COVID nineteen. They raised two hundred and forty six million pounds, ninety five percent of which came from existing shareholders, adding to their positions. Uh, the board announced that COVID nineteen had had no real detrimental impact on the business performance. Uh, due to a surge in casual wear being ordered online. So there's all these people at home no longer buying formal wear and thinking, well, I'm just staying at home. I might as well just buy some casual, casual comfy clothing. Uh, mass surge online of people buying online. And uh, that led to the record revenue and the record profits for the business. Revenue came in at 3.2 billion. True profits back up now to one one. 113 million but the share price stayed around the same didn't really budge hasn't really gone anywhere yet 
Then we look at 2021. So we're now at 26.4 million active customers. Again, record revenue, record profits. Now 86.2% of traffic coming from mobile devices. That means the vast majority, the vast majority of people buying from ASOS are all using a mobile phone. I think that's fascinating. Uh, and we know, you know, we know that's the case these days, but I still find that the information, I just like, wow, no one's using desktops anymore at all, really. Very few. Um, for buying it through ASOS at least. The average basket value again flat at £72. So we're not seeing the growth there anymore. We, you know we were seeing constant growth every single year, up a couple of quid every year, and now it's kind of just stayed flat about 72 Not it's Maybe it's peaked. You know, maybe we're not seeing, it's, it's not going up any higher. You might remember this in the news. Uh, the company acquired uh, Topshop for $286.4 million, plus paid $10.5 million in integration costs to get Topshop integrated into uh, the ASOS company and the ASOS websites and everything. Uh, they also agreed a strategic partnership with Nordstrom stores in the USA to stock and sell both the ASOS uh, own label clothing and the Topshop clothing. Uh, they uh, announced a four-year growth strategy to double the size of the U.S. and the EU aspect of their business in order to grow revenue to a five billion a year business uh, and launch a unified stock pool between the U.K. and the U.S. They opened a new warehouse in Litchfield and in uh, the, the warehouse in Atlanta, USA, became automated. So revenue was record highs of $3.9 billion. Uh, true profits at 128 million, again a record, and the share price just starting to eke up, getting close to the 40 mark at this point in 2021. Then 2022 came along, and listen, at this point, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm doing this analysis today, I'm looking through all these annual reports, I'm writing all my notes in this red book, and I'm starting to think, we're on to a winner, this is looking pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, a couple of, you know, ropey moments along the way, but I'm thinking, this is looking pretty awesome, and maybe this is a company I want to be paying a close eye to myself, right? 2022 then comes along, and we've got some problems. Uh, so active customers is still up at 26.4 million. Okay, so they are finding more and more customers. Revenue, 3.9 billion. Revenue is not a problem. Finding new customers, not a problem. However, the chairman and the CEO both step down. Replacements arrive with both of them. The new CEO, uh, a man called either Jose Ramos or Jose Ramos, um, announces that poor results are a reflection of ASOS being allowed to overspend on capital expenditure. Costs are far too high. Current economical conditions are causing cost problems for the business, preventing any room for growth. Costs are rising faster than revenue growth itself. Reduced spending is also playing its part. So we, we haven't looked at the financials yet, but what we're going to see in those financials is that they've got no problems with revenue climbing. Every year, revenue is going up. ASOS's problems are their costs, like significantly so. So what's happened here is that the CEO has come into the business and he's immediately identified there's problems with the fact that we are spending or ASOS are spending way too much in terms of costs. So we've got no problem here with revenue climbing, with them being able to find ways to increase the money coming in. The problem is that this is a company that have set themselves up in a way where their costs are so high they actually are either rising in line with the increase in revenue, so they're not seeing any better profit from it, or the costs are actually rising faster than the revenue, which is what we're starting to see now. And so now it's too late, but now they've started to realize the costs are out of control. The costs are so high to run this business, we're actually making a loss. So that was the last annual report that came out. However, that was August 2022. Since then, we've had a couple of news articles come out, and I'd be remiss not to include them because they do develop the situation and the story a little bit further. So in October 2022, ASOS have now warned of H1 losses. So when we say H1, we're talking about the first half of the year, the, 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 one, the first half. 2023 annual report comes out in August 2023. They're warning the first half of that year is a loss-making year for the company. It's a problem they still haven't solved. Uh, 
And we don't know the extent of those losses just now, but yeah, not good sign. Uh, they've reported significant markdown in prices in order to clear excess stock from the inventory. So they've had to knock down their prices just to get rid of stock by the sounds of things, which has obviously then caused a loss in profit. Uh, the CEO repeats that ASOS need to change the way they operate. And they also announced the decision to write off 130 million of excess inventory to help cope with supply chain constraints. So oh, that's expensive. 130 million written off. That's, I mean, it's, it's 130 million of excess inventory. That's basically going to just come off the balance sheet, isn't it? There's just assets that are just going to disappear, essentially. Um, but that means, you know, they're not going to make the profit on that inventory. So that's just going to set the company back a little bit. Uh, the CEO adds the company have negotiated a restructure of its borrowing. Uh, when that news came out, that caused the share price to drop a bit further because any need to go back to the lenders and say, oh, we need to make some changes, we're going to struggle, uh, is generally a bad sign and it causes investors to panic and, you know, they stop buying the, sh the stock. That causes prices to fall. So um, they've also advised that they may have to consider sharing warehouse space with other companies to help reduce costs. So, again, when you read that, you just think, oh, that's doesn't sound good does it doesn't sound like a company in control right now um aj aj bell analysts or uh, one of their analysts said that the current crisis has revealed flaws in asos's business model particularly in its paper thin margins uh they also added that they think it's poor that something as simple as stock management has been overlooked by the business and led to 130 million pound write-off uh, these add to longer term concerns about the sustainability of the fast fashion industry. Their words, not mine. I honestly don't know much about the fast fashion industry, but according to an analyst at AJ Bell, there are longer term concerns around sustainability of it. So interesting. And if you are looking to invest in a company like this, that's something you may want to just do a bit of research on and find out what is going on with the industry. Does it look like it's got a healthy future? You know, what are these longer term concerns about the sustainability of it? Um, then what happened was in November, so last month, the CEO, CFO has left the company. That's the chief financial officer. And normally, in the grand scheme of things, a CFO leaving and a new one coming in, no big deal. It happens all the time. Not a big deal at all. This CFO left to go and join another company, SoftCat. Um, however, that has left ASOS in a predicament because they are trying to restructure their lending. And that is something that the CFO would generally lead. So they don't have a CFO to do that for them right now. And they need that done now. So bad timing for the CFO to go. They need to replace this person. However, it's, they've also announced that they are now looking to hire a restructuring expert to help the business work out how it's going to recover. So the CEO is looking at this and thinking we need to bring in an expert, an expert in restructuring the business. That to me is a business in a bit of a crisis right now. And that would I think that reflects why the share price is all the way down now at five pound a share from highs of what, 60, 70 pound a share. Not so long ago uh, it is a stock that has crashed big time. That's where we are. I want to take a look at the financials next. OK, so I'm not going to spend too long on these, but as you can see, revenue has no problem in growing whatsoever. Here's what I want to look at. The gross margin. What is this? The gross margin is essentially the revenue that comes in and then you've got the cost of sales, the cost of getting the clothing in, the products in that they're selling. It's growing. The cost of that is growing more than the revenue is growing. You can tell that by the percentage of margin left over. So essentially... What is the uh, the percentage of profit left over from the revenue after cost of sales? And you can see it's falling. So in 2018, 51.2, then down to 48.8, then down to 47.4, then down to 45.4. And in the latest annual report, now down to 43.6. So that is a trend over five years where revenue is growing, but the cost of sales is growing with it. And not only with it, it's growing faster than the revenue. And so the percentage, the, the, the slice of the cake that's left over as profit, as gross profit, is dwindling. It's getting smaller and smaller each year. So that's a bad sign. That means your costs are out of control. 
But they're not the only costs. There's also the expenses of running the business. And look at the expenses of running the business. They have always been way too high at 90%, just over 90%, some years 95%, some years 97%. That's 90% or 97% of the profit being spent on expenses that leaves you with 3% left. I mean, that's very paper thin, right? Um, as you can see, 2022, this is where the CEO's come in and he said, we've got a problem. The cost of sales are too high. The uh, administrational expenses of running the business are too high because they've come in at nearly 102% of the gross profit. In other words, the gross profit, 1.71 billion, the cost of running the business in terms of just the expenses, 1.74 billion. So no, there's no profit. You will not make a profit. In, and there's no way of making a profit that way unless you sell off chunks of assets to try and, you know, but that's unsustainable. In terms of the everyday recurring business, this is a company that's running at a loss and they got to get these costs under control. But essentially, they reported losses of 24.7 million, but actually without those extraneous income, it's actually a loss of 51.4 billion, sorry, 51.4 million on the everyday recurring business. And now they've reported that the first half, not the first quarter, the first half of the next year is loss making as well. So they've clearly not been able to take control of this costs issue. The fact they've lost the CFO right in the middle of trying to reorganize their borrowing uh, structure with their lenders and the fact that they need to hire in an expert to restructure the business, which means that hasn't been done yet. Plus restructuring usually costs a lot of money. They've done restructures in the past. Those cost like 10, 20 million sometimes. So these are all issues that are, the timing is awful for this to happen. Uh, and the problem you've got here is look how this business have been running. So from, let's say from 2014, the profit margin, 3.4%, 3.6, 2.4, 3.3, 3.4, it's too thin. It's too paper thin. We've also got the issue of debt levels. So they took on some debt in 2021, 459 million. That's now up to 474 million. We're starting to get to a level now where that's too rich for me as an investor. It's reaching a point where it's too expensive. Then add into the fact, the fact that they're now a loss making business and they still have that debt outstanding. That's a concern. And how do they become a profitable business now? How do they get their cost of sales down? How do they get their expenses down to a point where there's enough profit left over for them to do something with, to be able to pay down that debt, to be able to do something so that the business can grow? These are concerns. These are valid concerns. So if we add all their profits together uh, over the last 10 years, this company have brought in 511 million pounds in profits over the last 10 years so half a billion in profits but they've spent 1.2 billion in capital expenditure so their capital their capex is far too high relative to their earnings power and i've said this on so many episodes before when your profit margin is too thin all it's going to take is a little blip it could be a wider macroeconomic issue it could be a, a, a t big tax bill comes along and you're going to be running at a loss. And I like my companies that I invest in to have a much bigger margin than this. You know, I want to invest in companies that have got 20% profit margin. And they're taking that 20% and then reinvesting it back into that business so they can expand and grow. And they're doing it with their excess cash, their excess capital. Well, I think you can probably imagine that it's not going to be great. Um, I would say not as bad as Rolls Royce uh, last week. But I mean, this is definitely a company that until I'd say 2021, were looking pretty damn good, like a pretty decent investment. The only downside is the really thin profit margins and it's come to bite them on the butt. And, you know, this AJ Bell analyst was, says exactly the same thing, that the current crisis has revealed flaws in their business model particularly in its paper thin margins. Um, and I would say exactly the same thing. This is why I wouldn't invest in a company like ASOS. And it's the financials that let them down, in my, in my opinion. They've been running and running and running on these tiny thin margins. And as soon as a problem comes along, it's going to cause them massive issues. And it has done. And now there's a new CEO that's come in and he's like, We've got to get these costs down. We've got to do better. We've got to change the business model. We've got to restructure this entire business. That's going to cost tens of millions to restructure a business. Uh, they've written off 130 million in 
in excess stock because of a stock management error, essentially. Um, so they've and they've got these debts to pay down. They're not making any profit right now. <laughs> so the next couple of years, I think, are going to be a really tough few years for ASOS. And I think it's a massive shame. And they were doing very, very well. And it's all come crashing down. And I think uh, the large issue for that is this is a perfect example of why I would not invest in companies with only a two or three or four percent profit margin or worse because all it takes is for a little issue to come along like this where costs have gone up and they're no they're no longer a profitable business and what's going to happen to your share price when you start when you when you are a profitable business at 70 pound a share and then you start posting losses the share price crashes and I don't want to be an investor in a company where I've bought a 50 60 70 pound a share and now I'm sitting and looking at a share price of five pound 20 and the company look like they've got no way of getting back out of there right now that's not where I would want to be so yeah this is a very this is the very reason and it's a prime example of why I don't invest in companies with paper thin margins and that is a blanket rule for me as an investor so let's take a look at the price well with all of this taken into account and all of these issues ASOS scored a minus 63 probably no surprise to you that they uh, didn't do very well they're pretty much in the same place as boohoo which is a very similar sort of business they find that they're both finding themselves in a very similar situation mostly financially um, not the worst business we've looked at but not a company i would ever invest in this is a cheap stock now you're not getting any profit off this stock so if you're going to invest in this company on a per share basis there's no eps there's no earnings per share there's no earnings so you've got nothing no return coming in on your share price however in relation to the assets of the business the net worth of this business this is a company worth 1 billion in assets and they've only got 100 million shares outstanding in circulation which means that they have a net asset value per share of 10 pound 15 per share so you can buy this stock this share at 5 pounds a share and if you were to buy all of the shares in this company you would immediately double your money in terms of the net asset value of this business if you then liquefied the entire business sold all the assets sold all the liabilities you'd have 10 pound 15 per share you bought them up to five pound 11 so you're getting double your money in terms of the net worth of the business but there's no profitability here there's no income there's no i, I couldn't buy the share i couldn't even really price it up because I mean, if this was a if the company was still making the profits that they were making back in 2020, 2021, then I'd be happy to pay 15 pound a share for this stock. Absolutely. Uh, but whilst the time it's not making any profit, then I wouldn't spend a penny on this stock. You know, I mean, you could take a punt at five pound a share. And if they sort these problems out, if they can reduce costs, if they can get over the debt that they have outstanding, if they can get over the 150, uh, 130 million pound uh, in inventory write-off if they can get over all of these things and turn this back into a profitable business uh, and that's all down to the CEO and his team then five pounds is steel because they'll probably go back up in value but for me and I say this a lot on this show there are better more secure opportunities out there on the market I don't need to take this risk now some of you might look at this and as a from a gambling pen, uh, point of view or a uh, uh, an opportunistic point of view and think well five pound a share if it ever got back up to 60 again i'd be quids in sure but just take into account all the things this company and the ceo and his team have to tackle to, for that to happen i wouldn't invest my capital in this personally because i know that i've got better options out there um, but this is a gamble it is an opportunity and someone out there might be looking for that punt and if you are good luck to you 